On vous fait gagner la raquette de Roger Federer en collaboration avec Wilson les légendes par tirage au sort. Premier lien dans la description. La RF01 très polyvalente, maniable et au design à l'image de la légende suisse, tout simplement magnifique. Bonne chance. How much difference there's between this racket and the one you are using when you are pro? Results would have told me, but uh, I must say it feels, uh, I mean, very different. This is not just a, an evolution in, in my mind. It's more of a revolution. Um, took me. I, I was so excited to go down to a lighter frame and just uh, try something completely different towards the end of my career. Um, and. Uh, And give it a go. So I think I overcame that fear uh, quickly. Now holding it in my hand, um, again, obviously it's a it's another step closer to an easier, player-friendly racket. You know, when you don't feel so well and you wake up and you just go play some tennis. This to me seems much easier than you know when I go back in the last 20 years. I've played with much more difficult rackets to play with. So this for me feels very easy. I know maybe for some people uh, still they probably think that maybe the sweet spot is smaller or that whatever they think. But for me, this feels actually really, really nice. It uh, travels through the air quickly. That's what I wanted. So I could um, maintain a really nice racket head speed because I feel like over time, when you're a professional tennis player, you start playing the percentages, you start playing maybe a little slower. You're scared to you know, hit through the ball and um, really unload on it. And I wanted to make sure I, I kept that up. You know? So I was really focusing on, on racket speed, nice top spin shots, you know, especially also in defense, you know, if, I, if I had to hit a passing shot or something. So I, I, I like um, the frame a lot and I think it came out really nice. I mean, the design uh, is another thing, but um, the way it plays, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, do you remember your first racket as a kid or a junior? And I remember playing a junior racket that I played for so long that the whole frame at the top, you know, the whole bumper grommet was gone and actually was eating through the entire uh, frame. And when I played on a hard court against a, a, an older guy, I remember the whole racket was so light and it was shaking so hard and I realized that was the time for me to change rackets. And then um, I think the next racket I got was a... Uh, Uh, on my on Christmas in South Africa from my from my parents, it had all the writing on the side. It was like I think the time of the Thunderbird and the Hammer rackets when they came out, and um, and then after that, I when I was 14 and I joined the National Tennis Center um, when the court was really really quick. Um, I changed it actually the 85 uh, Pro Staff, which uh, was a huge change for me, um, much heavier. I actually changed as well to the Jim Career one, one with the American flag uh, with it. And then they, I think they abandoned that racket. And then that's when I then made the final the switch to the 85, the, the Pro Staff. So, um, what much too heavy for me at the time, but uh, uh, I feel like uh, it gave, yeah. It gave me the chance to actually be able to hit through the ball on a very quick court because uh, I was still struggling to come over the ball on the backhand side. I was playing a lot of slices and I feel like the heavier frame at the time uh, helped me with that, to overcome that fear. You are recently retired, but you are still an observer of, uh, of tennis. Do you think the sports have changed a lot and is it time for tennis to evolve? I mean, I feel like it's similar, you know, if I look at, uh, there's only a handful of players uh, at the top that I haven't played against, you know, obviously the Sinner and Alcaraz, but I practice with them a ton, so it's not like uh, I'm that far detached from the game, so I think it's a similar style, I mean, Novak's still playing, who, you know, who I played uh, so many times against, um, just what I see, and that's the kind of the trend that I see happening, which I uh, mentioned on the court as well, I think uh, guys and also... Uh, the ladies are also going to just start hitting bigger forehands and backhands and going to be more uh, fearless, you know, uh, because they realize the, um, the reward is there. Um, and I just think, as and that's I like to see that the best movers are the best players. Uh, and you can see that throughout, you know, the mentally fittest, the physically strongest and the fastest ones are usually also the best players. T it's not so much about technique anymore, you know, I've gotten fooled enough uh, in the last 10, 15, 20 years where I think, oh, I don't, I'm not sure about this technique, but with racket technology, string technology, you can iron that problem out. And if you, as long as you hit hard and nice through the ball, Um, everything's possible in, in tennis, to be honest. So I think the, um, the game is um, where it was, um, just again, a step higher. I always feel like it keeps on going up. 
maybe you know maybe sometimes a bit of lack of um, variation but that's because we have all double handers nowadays they don't use the slice so much so naturally uh, we don't see so much drop shots you know obviously uh, Alcaraz does it uh, a bit differently Medvedev they, they try to uh, add it to the game which I think is a great play but obviously you would have to train it a lot you know the transition game but um, for the most part I think um, I enjoy watching tennis uh, still today and uh, it's always going to be uh, in, safe, in a safe place because just tennis is a, is a wonderful sport. So I'm, I don't need much <laughs> to be happy. When you start developing the new racket with Wilson, did you think about players who play offensive, defensive, you know, especially for the amateur? Because unfortunately, nobody plays like you anymore. So I, so. Um, I mean, I guess this particular frame for me was more still based on my on my tennis, uh, to be honest, because that was the idea to come back uh, with this one, you know, I guess a couple of years back. Um, so this one was heavily focused on a, on a lighter frame for my, my, my playing style. Um, did we do a couple of changes maybe along the way once I realized I was not going to play anymore? Maybe, but, but no, all that was only marginally, if, if at all, and I would think that the racket I would create in the future, which I'm, I'm sure there will be, then that will be a whole different uh, mindset going into the, the frame that will be then for the people, I'd say, you know, with obviously my DNA in it. So, but I feel like this is very much still the racket that uh, I would have hoped to, I don't know, win Wimbledon, for, uh, for instance, with, yeah. There are only a few players left uh, with a one-handed backhand, like Tsitsipas, Dimitrov and... Um... Team. What is going on? Oh, not teams on the ramp for long. What what could be done to to change <laughs> that that people play more one-handed backhand? Tie up that the, the, the hand behind the back, you know, and uh, have them play with one hand. I guess it comes a lot from coaching. You would think. I mean, two things. I guess it would be great to have you know world number one, world number two with a one-hander, which we don't have right now. So that's gonna you know not inspire another generation of playing with a one-hander because I do think that the juniors, in a heavy way, look towards the best players in the world. And if you see double-hander, you you would think that that is the way forward, even though it might not be. But um, so that's gonna be. An inspiration for not going to the one-hander, and then I just think it's the coaches, you know, around the world that obviously have to maybe realize that some players might play better with a one-hander than with a two-hander. You know, I understand that obviously the, the entering the game on the forehand side is always going to be one-hander. Usually, the coach needs to know, and the player does he have the urge and wanting to to try that out like I did? I'm not sure, but I do think for sure um, uh, the one-hander backhand still has. Has a space in in the in the modern game. Um, of course, I do think you can fight so much more with a double hander, especially on the return or in defense. That maybe with the one hander is is a little bit more difficult. And I feel what I'm seeing much more nowadays is also that double handed players have a much better slice as well, which I feel like was not always the case, you know, 20 years ago when I came on tour. So. Uh, be interesting to see, be sad to see, you know, uh, less and less and less one-handers like we see right now, but uh, I'm happy Grigor is here, and so we'll, we'll get to, and Sitsipa, so I'm, I'm happy we're going to get to see a few one-handed backhands here uh, at the Labour Cup. The Labour Cup was created under your leadership, it's now included in the calendar. Uh, what do you like in this competition? I think the camaraderie of top guys from different nations coming together, um, and uh, having a legendary coach uh, uh, next to them during the match and um, and you know just going cross generation from really young and um, to older and while we're um, let's say I was still playing I was able to give back you know to the, the younger guys on the tour because everybody has got their different uh, ways of behaving or needs or preparations they need and um, the idea was really to to learn from one another, to come out really rejuvenated and uh, motivated for the tour after the Labour Cup and we wanted to make, create a competition that uh, honours uh, the past as well and I've been very um, like a historian, you know, when it comes to the game of tennis, uh, all my coaches and uh, back in the 90s uh, we always talked about who did what, what kind of streak, tournament, what did they do and I was really interested in the past and I think the, the Labour Cup is that melting 
part of the past, but also embracing the future and being uh, trying a bit something different and, and taking a chance, I believe. That's where I'm super grateful to, to Bjorn and John. I told them yesterday for actually believing in the concept of the Labour Cup, because when we had to sell them the idea of there's a Labour Cup, you don't know how it's going to be like, but I think it's going to be great and we're going to have these these two teams, the world and, uh, and Europe, you could be captains and just bring back the, you know, legend of the game into a competition like this uh, has been a lot of fun for me and they seem to be really sad leaving, you know, which is, I guess, a good thing because, uh, you know, you shouldn't stay at the dance for too long, but I hope they will always return to to the Labour Cup and uh, find that we can hang out now, now that, I, you know, I have time on the sidelines. So, but... Uh, um, I'm happy to have seen it grow over the last seven years and it's been absolutely fantastic playing in it but also now seeing it as a more from a fan perspective um, it's been great. It's just uh, great seeing the guys again and I think for me honestly I mean sure Labour Cup is really important and um, um, it means a lot I put a lot of time into it I brainstorm a lot with Tony and the team how we can make it the best um, the best competition the best uh, uh, week for the players, the best time for the fans, for the media, so for it, it, that it works for everybody. Um, but I don't feel like I need to go out there and play so much, but I'm happy I'm able to still um, feel comfortable in a setting like this or go play tennis or see the guys, you know, because it would be also much easier just to stay home, get comfortable at home, and then you realize, hmm, don't actually need to be on tour anymore. And uh, I'm happy I uh, went right away back to some tournaments, Halle, Wimbledon, Shanghai, you know, Labour Cup, it gave me uh, a few tournaments to go to and uh, I feel I ripped the band-aid off quickly and when I walk around the, the tennis sites, I feel like I kind of still belong there. I don't feel like a, an alien, you know, which is, a, which is a good thing because you can feel like that very quickly, I feel. Yeah, because people, the players all ask, what are you doing here? And you're like, <laughs> exactly. If you talk, keep talking like this to me, I will never come back, so. <laughs> Roger, I have a question for you and for the Wilson team. You've been working together for now so a very long time. Did you ever think about developing a ball together? I mean, now you've got the racket, and um, would you think it would be interesting to have your special ball and put it in tight again? I mean, I feel like we did do a ball already, no? I mean, people know about it, I don't know. Yeah, we... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for... <laughs> Three years, four years, we had a Roger Federer uh, ball that we developed with you, yeah. specific to the uh, specifications that you were looking for. Um, I think we sold it from 2015 to 2020, or five years. Um, but yeah, maybe... Did we play with it here as well, maybe? The Labor Cup? Maybe, I don't, I don't remember. No, because... The Chicago Labor Cup. Chicago Labor yeah. Cup, yeah. So, yes, but absolutely. I'm a big believer in playing with the right ball, and that ball that we had built at the time was quite lively. It was on the more lively side, and it wouldn't lose the felt so much, I guess, you know? So, yes, but I'm yeah, absolutely but never, interested. You never had a chance to play it with, uh, on the... On the um, on the tour, I mean, uh, you didn't have a special tournament that they use Wilson RF balls. So that's why the, I was... Just a Chicago Labour Yeah, yeah Just okay. there. Yeah, yes, just exactly. There. Yeah. Okay. But yes, I'm interested to work with them on... On this specific On a specific ball. Yeah, ball, because I think uh, we forget sometimes how important they are. I know we all think they look the same, but they don't play the same. Yeah. Sure. Uh, looking at your situation, um, looking back a few years, uh, how did you imagine uh, retirement, a normal day in retirement, and how big is the difference uh, now uh, that you've lived it for a few years? Um, I thought it was going to be similar to what it is now. A little less busy. I feel like I'm very busy. I think the kids are also doing that to me. Um, I mean, they're, I think in this age right now, when I speak to all my friends, um, they're all in a in a tunnel, you know, I think the kids are so busy, especially after school activities and everything um, keeps you, it's an intense schedule. And then obviously I had some really fun, incredible projects like the racket, um, you know, that we were able to build together the last, uh, last few years now. And then the marketing, the promotional, talking about it. I mean, that, that's so much fun. So it, and it never really actually feels like work. I just feel like I'm being really busy. I'm traveling quite a bit. But that's also maybe post-COVID, post-surgery and all that stuff. I can finally get back on my feet and go out again and, and see people. And then, look, I want to catch up with a lot of my friends that I haven't seen in a while. Before, it would happen naturally through all the majors and all the Grand Slams and all that stuff for tournaments. And um, it's been great. Uh, 
I'm very happy with the transition and uh, life's really good, so I'm very happy. You were actually just talking about the juniors, and we have two juniors here, mm -hmm. the one that you just hit with, and we actually want to hear from them. How does it feel to, to Ooh, play with the, with the racket? Pressure, you're not nice now, come on. About the racket, I think it's like a, it's a very good racket. I think like it's pretty similar to the one I'm playing right now. And um, I think it's a great balance between like uh, a lot of power and control. And I, I feel like when you have a good sweet spot, it's like a, you can, you can uh, like play hit hard with it. And uh, yeah, I really, I really liked it, yeah. How was set a court? Uh, it was great, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was as well that, for sure. Like playing on the, that big court was like a great experience. Um, yeah, very exciting moment. and. Yeah, it was enough, nice. enough space to move. Yeah, yeah. like uh, I it's mean, it's a huge court. Yeah, probably the most space we have ever had in my life. Yeah. yeah, on the court. Great. Um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. I had so much fun, and the racket I've been testing now for a few days, and uh, I got a really good feedback, good feeling, good speed. Also, a really good uh, mixture. How he said, and. Yeah, I think, I don't know in the future, but um, it's definitely something I'm going to keep in my mind. And yeah, I mean, center court, uh, I'm not used to so big courts and it's, it was an amazing experience. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so her dad used to be my doubles partner in Davis Cup. He's here, yeah. so won the, we played four times, won four times the Davis Cup, so now I'm playing with her daughter, his daughter, it's incredible. So this is uh, great, nice to see you in a minute. What's the most important thing when you play the racket? Is it uh, the string, the balance, um, the feeling, what it is? The moment of impact. I mean, that's got to be the moment of moments in my mind, um, you know. And then, of course, um, when it comes down to the crunch, five all, you know, you don't think of the racket. <laughs> it's just there. And uh, it's about tactics and it's about everything else. That's when you know you have uh, the right racket in your hand. Um, but that feeling of hitting a clean ball, that's what it is for me. Of course, you know, the grip and all that stuff is important. But uh, that's why I change grips a lot. Of course, uh, you know, I like having a new grip, not like a used one all the time. Uh, it just feels like you're almost holding a, a new racket all together in it. But uh, yeah, the moment of, of impact uh, of hitting a nice tennis shot, that makes me really happy. Yeah. Like in golf, I guess. I'm still trying to find that moment. But. <rire> On vous fait gagner la raquette de Roger Federer en collaboration avec Wilson les légendes par tirage au sort. Premier lien dans la description. La RF01 très polyvalente, maniable et au design à l'image de la légende suisse, tout simplement magnifique. Bonne chance.